Welcome back to the events and mapping class video series. This video will cover some of the basic concepts that are important to know when creating maps. The two main things I will discuss in this video are the meaning of geospatial data and the significance of map projections. Understanding these concepts is important to informing the creation of your maps. So the first thing we'll be covering is geospatial data. In the most basic sense, geospatial data is any data which references a geographic location. It often contains non-spatial data as well, known as attributes. There are two main types of geospatial data, with the first being vector data and the second being raster data. One important thing to note about geospatial data is that it is only as accurate as the scale it was collected at. Vector data is the first type of geospatial data, which is the main type used with Map Publisher. It can be defined using two-dimensional xy coordinates and is often referred to by its feature type, such as point, line, or area data. In the example map here, the wells represent point data, the rivers represent line data, and the lake represents area data. An advantage of vector data is that it will have a relatively smaller file size and require less RAM to process than a comparable study area of raster data. Raster data is the main type of geospatial data that is manipulated with Geographic Imager, but it can also be used in Map Publisher to provide a background for vector features. In a raster dataset, each pixel represents a value within a certain range. For example, in the digital elevation model seen here, each pixel might represent an elevation value, such as meters above sea level. A caveat of raster data is that it has a relatively larger file size, although it is the ideal type of data for creating continuous data sets. If we go to Map Publisher and go to the Import, you can see that there are many different types of data that you can import, such as shape files, MIF files, and images, which would be where you would put in a raster data set. You can also import from geodatabases or from online sources such as your ArcGIS Online account, web feature services, and web map services. So next I'm going to talk about map projections. A map projection is a two-dimensional representation of the Earth, or a portion of the Earth. In order to use a projection, your map must be georeferenced. Georeferencing is the process of matching locations on your map to points on a coordinate system that models the real world. This enables any GIS software you may use to know where in the world your map is located. One thing to remember about map projections is that distortion is always present, due to the curvature of the Earth. There are four main map projection properties you can preserve. Area, shape, distance, and direction. Since it is impossible to preserve all four at once, the type of map projection you choose depends on which properties are most important for the usage of your map. Another important thing to note about map making is that the larger the area is that you want to map, the greater the distortion will be. One example of a map projection is the commonly used Mercator projection. This is a conformal projection which preserves the direction of the parallels and meridians and the shape of features, and thus cannot preserve area or distance. As a result, features become more inflated as you move further away from the equator. Another example of a projection is the sinusoidal projection, which is both an equal area and equidistant projection. It preserves the area and distance of features, which results in the distortion of directions and shapes. The Robinson projection is a great example of a compromise projection. While it does not entirely preserve any one of the map properties, it instead includes a reasonable amount of distortion of each property to reach a compromise between all four. These are just a few of the possible projections one can choose from. While the examples here all deal with mapping the entire world, there are also map projections that focus on representing only certain regions of the globe at a time. So if we go into Map Publisher again, and we go to our map view, and we pretend like we're going to change the coordinate system, and we go to All, you can see that there are many different coordinate systems that you can choose from in the library. Some of these focus on individual areas, some of them focus on the entire globe. It just depends what you want to use it for. So this video is intended to just be a brief overview of what you need to know to start making maps, but it is in no way covering all the bases. We hope that this will give you some context for the following tutorials. 